So the version of Star you saw is the version that they were working on when I arrived in 83. And if Robert was blown away when he came here at the hardware design, um, I was really blown away because I came from a, heart, from a um, mainframe operating system background just before this. And um, I'm very proud to have been able to work on this project for so many years. Um, my job in this whole thing has kind of been I had, I had some hardware in my garage that I got from Alan Fryer and some more people, and in the course of my work, I managed to figure out how to make it work again. And so we were able to do a demo for the Kai conference, Human Interface. In fact, I became a Human Interface designer at the end of my um, Xerox stay because I was so impressed with the user interface and I wanted to do a better job for everybody else. So I went to Apple and, and worked there as a Human Interface designer. Um, well, long story, um, but um, so we went to the Kai conference and everybody was really impressed and John Schock suggested that we do this again and so since everybody's covered all the interesting things, I thought I'd tell you about the, well not the interesting, but some of the things that people don't really notice. Can I have a slide please? Thank you. Great, I hope. So. Um, all of those, all those wonderful things Dave showed with equations and all that, that was, that was, that worked because we had, you know, not just ASCII. Um, and also, we, we supported, oh gee, let's see, um, in the very first release we had Russian, French, Swedish, um, lo lots of other things. And then like six months later, we supported Japanese. So in the end of, of 82, I, I believe, is, is when JSTAR came out. And it may be tough to see, but this is actually um, Japanese typed on the screen and printed. And in the course of, of the next few years, um, Xerox Character Code Standard, which, which became um, Unicode, really, Unicode came from this, supported every major language, um, some, some little known facts, some of the other innovations you may not be aware of. Directory services, we call them clearing houses. Um, they derive from um, originally Grapevine here at Park on, on, the, uh, on the Altos. Um, now, 18 years later, they're all the rage um, with, with LDAP and Microsoft Direct, Active Directory. Of course, Novell did support um, directories for a number of years and they were, I'm told, extremely similar to clearing house. Um, courier, remote procedure calls, you know, originated here. Of course, it originated with, um, with the Altos first, and we productized them and shipped them. Um, print protocols, um, internet printing protocols that you guys, if you really get into printing, you may care about, um, derived from here. Um, CUSP, CUSP was customer programming. It, basically, it was end-user programming. It, it was intended to allow users to program. Well, it actually turned out that more like consultants program, but anyway. Um, it was an English language programming tool that was, that was extremely popular with some of our major customers. Um, I'm told that Lufthansa Airlines did everything from, from menu planning and everything else using CUSP. Um, that's kind of metamorphosed into Metaphor capsules, um, slightly different, and AppleScript, a project I worked on at Apple for a while. The intent was, in, again, to allow users, uh, well, really consultants, um, to be able to automate um, stuff on, on the system. Um, boot servers, well, boot servers, um, if, you, if you use an Alto, you knew you, you downloaded things like Maze War um, and, and other games um, and, and applications. Um, in, in our product days, we shipped something called boot servers so you could boot installer and utilities and things like that from the network. Um, that's metamorphosed into application servers that now download things like Java applets. Um, WebLogic and Kiva slash Netscape um, do this now, very popular. Um, only so many years later. Remote access, the ability to, from someplace remote, like your home or someplace out, out in the field, dial in through a modem and be connected transparently to the network at the other end, um, cause Alan Fryer no end of grief trying to make it all work. 
um, but it really looked like you were on a very slow Ethernet connection. Um, and of course, that's extremely popular now in, in the nomadic world that we live, where everybody carries a notebook computer and they want to plug in, but they have to dial in to, to work to get stuff. So that's just a few of the things that we did. Um, I want to say thank you for all the people who helped make this happen, like Kathy Ching and Stella Timmons and um, well, of XSoft, who, who provided me with some floppies that they managed to find, um, as well as some hardware. Um, Alan Fryer, who helped make all this hardware work in the first place, and of course, Tony Stafford, who has a garage, I'm told, full of Metaphor machines. Um, these, in fact, are 10 megabit, sorry, 10 megabyte, very first um, 8010s. So they're very old. We're, we're very happy that they're still working. We, uh, he also managed to find in his garage a box of software that he, when he left Metaphor, Metaphor, got rid of the stars, whatever it was, the stuff went to his house for some reason, and it has, <laughs> he had a box of software. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Excuse me, Dave. Um, so anyway, there's, um, in this box we found um, software from 1983, 1984, which we actually, we actually last night loaded floppies from 1984, eight-inch floppies that still loaded and still worked. Um, we did have a bit of a problem with product factoring, trying to find, trying to find keys to, to unlock it, but a scrap of paper was found with a password that worked, and so we were able to last night product factor things and make it all work. So we're very, very thankful to Tony for, for stashing this stuff. Um, and of course, to the hundreds of people here um, who worked on STAR, um, of which I was just one of those people. Thank you for coming. And now we'll do Q, oh, I'm sorry, there is two more things I should tell you. Um, let's see. If you didn't sign the poster outside, the, the, the people who worked on the STAR, please do so. There, there's a poster somewhere. Um, and the Xerox STAR retrospective, which Jeff Johnson and people worked on, Jeff has kindly provided a few copies if you're interested in that. And now we'll do Q&A. So.